When the first four of the seven seals are broken, four riders will be summoned. Conquest, war, famine, and death. These riders will usher in the apocalypse. You've likely heard of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, whether from the original biblical accounts or modern references. When discussing the end times, the four horsemen are a prominent fixture. So, who are these enigmatic figures, and what are their stories? I will reveal everything to you at the end of the video, so make sure you like, subscribe, and stick around till the end. They appear in three main books. In the Old Testament, the riders are found in the book of Zechariah and the book of Ezekiel. In the New Testament, John of Patmos describes them in the book of Revelation. Chapter 6 of Revelation talks about a scroll in God's right hand, sealed by seven individual seals. When the Lamb of God opens the first four seals, four beings riding white, red, black, and pale horses are summoned. Of these four riders, only death is named in the Bible. The others are named based on what they represent. The Lamb of God, for those unfamiliar, is a title given to Jesus Christ. This suggests that if Jesus himself is opening these seals and unleashing the apocalypse on humanity, it might be ordained by God. Perhaps it's a future or a punishment humanity has brought upon itself. The Rider in White The first horseman to appear is the Rider in White, symbolizing conquest as described in Revelation 6 verses 1 to 2. Then I saw when the Lamb broke one of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying as with a voice of thunder, Come. I looked and behold a white horse, and he who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. This rider is depicted with a bow and wearing a crown, signifying authority and victory. Traditionally, early Christian interpretations saw the white rider as representing Christ or the spread of the gospel, where his conquest was a spiritual one, symbolizing the triumph of Christianity over false religions. The color white, often associated with purity and righteousness in the Bible, reinforces this view. For instance, Revelation 19 verses 11 to 13 describes Christ on a white horse leading heavenly armies in righteousness, which parallels the imagery of the first horseman and supports the interpretation of the white rider as a divine figure aligned with holy purpose. However, interpretations have evolved over time. During the mid-19th century, some theologians began to see the White Rider as representing the Antichrist, a false messiah who deceives and leads people astray, suggesting that his conquest is one of deception rather than holiness. More recent interpretations have sometimes associated the first horseman with pestilence and disease, arguing that conquest and war often lead to the spread of disease. This view positions the White Rider as a bringer of plagues, the Romans had their perspective, seeing the White Rider as a symbol of triumph, political success and prosperity, emblematic of Rome's military victories. These varied interpretations highlight the complex symbolism of the White Rider, whose depiction in Revelation continues to inspire diverse theological and scholarly discussions. The Rider in Red The second horseman is the Rider in Red, representing war, as described in Revelation 6, verses 3 to 4. When he broke the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come! And another, a red horse, went out. And to him who sat on it, it was granted to take peace from the earth, and that men would slay one another, and a great sword was given to him. This horseman rides a fiery red horse and holds a great sword, which symbolizes his mission to incite conflict and bloodshed. The red color is often associated with blood and violence, reinforcing the warlike nature of this rider. The upward-facing sword signifies an intention to battle, and this imagery is relatively straightforward in representing the chaos and destruction that war brings. Traditionally, this horseman is seen as embodying the strife and slaughter that follow when peace is taken from the earth, leading to widespread violence and civil unrest. In historical contexts, scholars have interpreted the rider in red as signifying civil war and internal conflict within nations. For example, during the Roman Empire, the breaking of the Second Seal was seen as a period when peace left Rome, leading to bloodshed, civil war and insurrection. This turmoil is often attributed to the reign of Emperor Commodus, whose rule marked the end of Rome's golden era and the beginning of civil unrest and decline. The Red Rider's symbolism 
extends beyond mere physical battles, also encompassing the broader disruptions and divisions within societies. This interpretation underscores the destructive power of war, not just in terms of immediate violence, but also in its long-term effects on social and political stability. Thus, the Rider in Red remains a potent symbol of the devastating impact of conflict throughout history, the Black Rider. The third horseman is the Black Rider, symbolizing famine, as described in Revelation 6 verses 5 to 6. When he broke the third seal, I heard the third living creature saying, Come. I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard something like a voice in the center of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, but do not damage the oil and the wine. This horseman is depicted carrying a pair of scales, which symbolize the measuring and rationing of food during times of scarcity. The passage describes exorbitant prices for basic staples like wheat and barley, indicating that an entire day's wage would only afford a small amount of food. This highlights the severity of the famine, where common people struggle to obtain essential provisions, while luxuries like oil and wine remain untouched, signifying the disparity between the wealthy and the poor. In historical and theological interpretations, the Black Rider's famine represents more than just the physical lack of food. It symbolizes economic disparity and the social consequences of extreme scarcity. During times of famine, the rich often continue their lavish lifestyles while the poor suffer and starve. This is reflective of the excessive taxation and economic mismanagement seen in various periods, such as in the late Roman Empire, where high taxes and inflation exacerbated the struggles of ordinary citizens. The scales held by the Black Rider also suggest a distorted sense of justice where the necessities of life are weighed and measured out unfairly. The symbolism of famine extends to the moral and spiritual realms, pointing to the consequences of human greed and societal neglect. Thus, the Black Rider encapsulates the multifaceted impact of famine, from immediate physical hunger to long-term socio-economic and ethical repercussions. The Pale Rider The fourth and final horseman is the Pale Rider, symbolizing death as described in Revelation 6 verses 7 to 8. When the Lamb broke the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come. I looked, and behold a pale horse, and he who sat on it had the name Death, and Hades was following with him. Authority was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword and with famine and with pestilence and by the wild beasts of the earth. This rider is named Death and he is followed by Hades, which can be interpreted as the realm of the dead or the grave itself. The pale color of the horse, often associated with a sickly or deathly pallor, underscores the lifelessness and decay that death brings. The Pale Rider has the authority to kill through various means, including sword, famine, plague and wild beasts, indicating a comprehensive dominion over mortality. Scholars and theologians have often interpreted the Pale Rider as a representation of the inevitable and universal nature of death. The presence of Hades following death suggests that with the end of life comes the grave or the underworld, reinforcing the finality and inescapability of death. The mention of multiple methods of killing, sword, famine, pestilence, and wild beasts, highlights the various ways in which death can strike, whether through violence, scarcity of food, disease, or nature itself. Historically, this imagery has been seen as a reflection of the pervasive and indiscriminate nature of death, affecting all people regardless of their status or power. In the context of the Roman Empire, the Pale Rider can be seen as symbolizing the ultimate decline and dissolution of the Empire. After years of internal strife, economic hardship and social upheaval, death marks the final stage of the Empire's fall. This Rider's appearance is a reminder of the transient nature of human achievements and the inevitability of mortality. The Pale Rider serves as a powerful symbol of the culmination of the chaos and destruction brought by the previous horsemen, leading to the ultimate dissolution and the final reckoning. Thus, the Pale Rider's imagery underscores the themes of mortality, the consequences of human actions, and the eventual return to dust. The Four Horsemen have been interpreted in various ways, 
one being a prophecy of the Great Tribulation, a series of God's judgments causing many on earth to die. Those who repented for their sins and accepted Him as their Savior would form a new world with the faithful. The horsemen were the first of these judgments, the first seals breaking signifying the arrival of the Antichrist, the second global war, the third economic collapse, and the last the death of a quarter of the world's population. The book of Zechariah offers a different take on the four horsemen, presenting them as four spirits descending from heaven on chariots, each with a different colored horse. Unlike in Revelation, their role here is to patrol the earth and maintain peace, essentially the opposite of their role in Revelation. I hope this video has shed some light on the four horsemen. Feel free to share your favorite references to the four horsemen in the comments.